Hey folks, welcome back. Burke here with more rehab tips and tricks inspired by you, your comments, your observations, and your questions. So if you are a backcountry skier and you are having lateral hip pain, then this video is for you. This is gonna be pretty brief because I've already done a video on glute medius tears, basic rehab principles, tests, and I'm gonna leave a link for that in the description and probably leave it in the card as well. So let's just talk about skiing for a moment. Why do skiers, backcountry skiers in particular, tend to develop glute medius problems? Well, the root of this really has to do with a few things. The first is the skinning motion itself. When backcountry skiers are skinning, the range of motion the hip joint moves through while it is under load is greater than the normal range of motion under load during walking and running. If you are skiing with a buddy and you look and you observe the range, the dynamic range that the hip moves in while under tension, you're going to see that there is a greater amount of hip flexion when they're is an initial loading response of the body weight onto the ski. And that is sustained. That's, that's number one, the range of motion. Number two is how long that tension is on there. That tension is sustained quite a bit longer. So when we look at walking, walking is something that we call a double contact activity, meaning there are periods where both feet are actually on the ground. Then one is lifted and put down and then the other, but that period where both feet are on the ground is double contact. In skinning, backcountry skinning, we have the same basic principle of double contact where both skis are weighted before you shift your weight fully onto one ski to advance the other ski. So the, the second idea here is that the amount of time under tension therefore is greater than it would be under normal walking conditions. So range of motion and time under tension. And then the third main key for this particular problem is just the number of repetitions and the amount of force. It takes more force and stability to move through snow, variable condition snow, snow that's heavier, thicker, deeper, et cetera. And so that is translated into more muscular effort. And the repetitions that are involved in backcountry skiing are high. There's thousands of times of advancing a leg when you're skinning. If you're on some long approach, if you're doing laps, anything like that, you're going to be under load quite a bit longer. So as a physical therapist, if you came into my clinic and said, help me, I want to skin this winter, I want to be able to ski without hip pain. Those are kind of the three levers that we have to pull. The first is looking at range of motion, making sure that your hip is strong and functional through a relatively greater range of motion. And that's going to mean doing some exercises that are a little bit more varied in terms of that angle. The second is going to be a general more strength and power in the legs. We need more strength and power. Strength and power translates to some degree to a little bit of extra injury proofness. And so that's going to help a little bit with that just increased exposure. Uh, what does increased exposure cause? It causes fatigue and fatigue eventually leads to tissue breakdown and tissue breakdown leads to micro tearing and then eventually macro tearing. That's basically how that happens. So we're going to strengthen the whole thing. This is squats, deadlifts. We're going to get hypertrophy in these muscles. Let's get more power in these muscles. And that is going to help with the longer efforts, keeping those muscles a little bit more fatigue proof for more time. And then that third lever, that's a tough one because that depends upon you and your choices, your good choices that you can make about how long you go out for. It's a big commitment of time and energy to go backcountry skiing. And most of the time, at least my friends here in Bend, when they go, they're going, they're going big. Uh, otherwise, it's just usually not that worth it. So for that part of it, as you're easing back in and you're rehabbing your body, I recommend doing more classic skiing on tracks 
in the groomed ski area, just so that you have more control over that exposure piece. Set a timer for yourself, give yourself some limited exposures. And then the last tail end of that is how much recovery do you allow yourself after a big effort? Are you someone that's gonna go hit it hard the next day? Do you need three days or four days? Or what is your sweet spot for how frequently you can load up without getting underwater with the micro damage and the micro tears that you're incurring in your muscle? So those are some ideas for my skinners out there, my backcountry skiers, split boarders, snowshoers even. If you're doing snow sports, wintertime sports, these are a few ideas of things that I'd like you to consider in order to keep your hip healthy and happy this season. As always, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Mm -hmm.